Right, so imagine you are now on Mecha Bricks and you found a really cool asset that you just want to render and um, make it look pretty. So by default, you can export a couple of things, but you do not have the ones you probably would need um, directly to work with Maya or Arnold. So um, I would recommend you use the Colada DAE export and you can group them by color. I'm not sure how much that matters. You can do smooth normals and you can also do the logo on the studs and you just export that as a DAE file. Once that is downloaded, you can just uh, right click it and say extract here. Then you get the DAE file plus the textures. And one thing what I want to do now, there are probably several ways to convert DAE to FBX, but I'm using SSIMP. It's like a, a command line file exporter, it, uh, file converter. It does a lot of different things. So on the left, you will see my PowerShell. I browse to the SMP exa, I type in export, and then I just drag the DAE file in here and drag it again. And then I just change the um, extension to FBX, hit enter, and then this will convert that DAE file to an FBX. So now let's uh, meet up in Maya and I'll show you how to continue. So in Maya, I just went to file import, went to um, the location to the FBX file, hit import. By default, it comes in as a meter scale. So I just want to scale that down to um, 2.1 to get it in a smaller space. And you can see already that we get most of the things connected. Um, the only thing which you notice is there's lots of instances, which is not a big deal, um, but the shaders are fong material. So a cool thing in Arnold, you can go to um, shaders in the menu and convert shaders to Arnold, say all, and then all the materials will be converted to a Arnold standard surface shader, which is pretty sweet. One thing though, because we still have, depending on what asset you have, we right now have probably 15, 50 materials, but you don't want to go to each of them and enable subsurface scattering, change roughness values and all of that. So now, Let's use ChatGPT to help us with that. It's super fun. ChatGPT is quite powerful. So I'm using this now uh, to write me a Python script in Maya. So my prompt is um, act as a software developer for Python and Maya and write me a compact script without any comments. It should loop over every material I selected, change the base color and check the base color attribute. And if it has a connection, connect that to um, subsurface color and the radius attribute. If it doesn't have a connection, then it should um, set the value for color and radius the same as a base color. And then some simple sets are um, enable subsurface scattering, set to scale to 0 0.05, change the subsurface type to 2, which is uh, random walk 2, and set specular roughness to 0 0.1 and the color to 1. So now let's see what we get. I would say it's a pretty clean code. One thing I'm noticing, the base color is not um, extracted from a list. So uh, let's just copy this and head back to Maya. So in Maya, I just pasted what we just uh, generated from ChatGPT. And what I was saying is that this uh, CMDS will return me a list and we are accessing a tuple within the list um, down here, which will probably not work. But in any ways, let's just test it with one, with the first material selected. And it's just pretty black. Let's maybe find something more interesting. Let's uh, select this yellow uh, object here and find its shader. Select that. So now it's an orange color. Um, it's this 91 material. So let's select it and run the code. And yeah, we get one error here. And that's what I was saying. It's a tuple. And I believe this is the base color here. So if I just put this to uh, zero to just give me the, the so I'm just putting the brackets zero here. So it's, it will just give me the first index of that result. So if I run this code now, the base color should just be this tuple here. So uh, let's run this again and see what happens. And we're still getting an error reading element. And probably this base color here needs to be um, an asterisk. Let's see if that does the trick. And that does the trick. So what this asterisk means, it will just extract what is in here, the tuple, and it will just create three different values. And then you will notice that all these colors will be um, copied from the base color above to subsurface, the radius, the scale is being set, our roughness is being set. The only thing which didn't work is the specular color, which is interesting. Oh, I think it's a similar issue. We just need to put it one, one, one. Let's run it again. Yes, and now the, the specular color has been set to one as well. Let's just see, for instance, this one has a connection here and that's our other um, uh, condition. It checks, does it have a connection? If yes, set this connection to the other one. So let's just run it on this material as well. 
and pretty cool it does do it so um, the color is now connected to subsurface color and radius at the same time and the rest is enabled as well it will probably fail again because it now it will try to reconnect things uh, just see if that's the case and it says yes um, it's already connected so these connection things will error out so i'll just put them in a try and accept a clause uh, like that and then do exception it's not great to ignore the exception like what i'm doing now but for the sake of this video that's totally fine so i'm just passing uh so let's try again to run the code and now it does it as well so now uh, it goes over that over the connections and everything is being set up uh, and now let's have a look all right so now a little wally guy is fully set up in arnold it has its a uh, subsurface scattering material connected every shader is now essentially um with subsurface scattering um and we have all the controls and you can always learn and look at what chat gpt did to understand what's going on you can also um if i go back to chat gpt and at the bottom here i can just say add comments to each line um, now it will rerun the code or the prompt and it will now actually explain what it's doing which is probably if you're new to python it's a very good way to understand what each line is doing so um I hope you enjoyed this little excursion to little Python and how to set up Lego um, objects from Mechabricks using the Asimp um, converter to um, DIE to FBX. We went through ChatGPT, had some fun over there to create actually some cool prompts. And you can obviously do a lot with ChatGPT if you're not very comfortable in coding. This is a super great way to learn it. So I hope you enjoyed the short one. I'll try to maybe do a little bit more of these ones without so much hassle on editing and whatnot. So uh, let me know if you like these shorter ones. Um, and yeah, happy Legoing. Mm -hmm.